just a quick comment. Uh, we just had a question for your channel link, and I will put that in the chat. It's also in the video description. Yeah, just type in most awesome dude ever into your search <laughs> box. <laughs> I wonder who that comes up with, actually. I'm, I'm curious now. Um, uh, oh, actually, just uh, real quick, actually. Um, Swati just said, I think you became an atheist. I suppose he means atheist. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it, I think you got that backwards, though. Islam's paradise is an atheist paradise. Mm -hmm. So um, I... <laughs> I am an atheist if you're talking about if I believe in Allah or not. I don't believe Allah <laughs> is, is God. So um, if you're only referring to Allah, yes, I'm an atheist. Um, I am a theist when it comes to Christ as King, Lord, Savior. So if that's what you mean, I'm definitely not an atheist. Um, fun, fun, fun sidebar is the Romans used to call Christians atheists. Do you, have you ever heard that before? Yeah, that was uh, one. They had about three or four polemics that they loved to use, and that was one of them. Right, because we didn't believe in all of these different gods. They just assumed that we were atheists because we only believed in one, which is monotheist. Why are you guys calling us Trinitarians when the Romans called us uh, mono monotheists and were offended by that? Anyway, um, moving on. Yeah. Yes, yes. You're okay, good. sorry. Um, so talking about counterfeits right it's very interesting how when you break this down christ is doing it for you in this beautiful perfect sermon um so we were we were talking about these satanic counterfeits and then jesus goes on to warn you about satanic counterfeits he says <laughs> beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but in reality are villainous wolves you can identify them by their fruit that is by the way that they act can you pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. This is the plug that I was telling you about, about our next upcoming series. We have awesome. partnered with, I don't know if I can say this without us being copyright, but we've partnered with these people. <laughs> <laughs> we have not. You gotta be actually. careful. Dis Disney yeah. is not, not good about those things. <laughs> don't say the name, bro. <laughs> Sorry, um, the mouse is not good about this. Yeah. <laughs> Say Sisdni or something. I don't know. Um, <laughs> right. So speaking of wolves in sheep clothing, speaking of false prophets um, from from, you know, we've got Pixar you know, who, who created the movie called Finding Nemo. We've got Pix Akbar, who has a, a 1400 year old prequel to the finding nemo series called finding no mo because we cannot find mohammed anywhere in the bible they've been searching for 1400 years they've seen maybe evidences of him but when they actually examine it it's not really him so uh we're going to be we're going to be going through the series based on uh surah 7 157 which says that you can find the unlettered prophet all muslims say is muhammad written about in the scriptures that the jews and the christians have with so that means that uh, there's a whole bunch of implications that come with that. We'll, we'll go into that when we get into that series. But I'm super excited about it because we're going to go on a 1,400-year journey trying to find Muhammad in the Bible. Um, yeah, this should be pretty epic. I, I, I think that you're going to have to accept Islam, though, when we find that there are Bible passages that contain well, camels. And as we all know, <laughs> whenever you see camels in the Bible... That means it's a prophecy about Muhammad. So or Kayla, we are, you're going or to go Sila. down for sure. Kayla or or Sila or whatever whatever it is, right? So uh -huh. yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be finding Nomo. Um, but however, I've got to be honest, Thaddeus. I I think we accidentally found him in the in the preceding verse. False prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep are really villainous wolves. That um, in in uh, if you if you take the Greek of this, listen listen very carefully, Thaddeus. If if you take the Greek word false prophets mm -hmm. and you transliterate it from Greek to Latin, mm -hmm. and then you transliterate it from Latin to Aramaic. And then you transliterate it from Aramaic to Arabic. It spells Muhammad as a false prophet. So we have absolutely found him right here in the Bible. Matthew 7, 15. The search is over. Muslims, we found your guy. 
And as an added bonus, it's even the words of Jesus, because of course the Quran elsewhere says that Jesus personally prophesied Muhammad by name. Mm -hmm. Actually, Ahmed. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, then, I know Ahmed. And then, um, so yeah, I guess this, this probably actually. I think you're wrong. I think that when you do your your uh, gymnastics that uh -huh. Muslims like to do, which I know are perfectly legitimate, because that's how they find Muhammad in the Bible. <laughs> so I know that those tactics are perfectly legitimate. I'm th mm -hmm. I'm thinking this is going to say Ahmed is a false prophet. Ahmed. Well, actually, no. So so <laughs> there's actually Muhammad false prophets when you do that that little Dawa dance. That actually says Muhammad. Vicious wolves. Believe it or not, like this is. It's, it's like the number 19. It's an absolute miracle. Vicious wolves, when you divide it by potato, it ends up equaling Ahmed. So we found him twice. Uh, Amazing. It's, I am blown away at the mental gymnastics that are required, that are required to, uh, to do, to do any of this types of stuff. Right. Um, but, but to be serious, right. So, we talked about knowing them by their fruits, wolves and sheep's clothing. Um, as we highlighted from previous discussions, right? We, I think we talked about this last time. Muhammad went from being honestly a pretty, he sounded like a pretty good dude, right? He sounded like a pretty, pretty okay guy before he had the encounter with the assault angel and then proceeded. And then he proceeded to not be that great of a guy. He went on to abolish adoption, marry a six year old ordered the beheading of nearly a thousand Jewish people, married his daughter-in-law after he caused the divorce, uh, admittedly died in the way that he said he would die as proof if he were a false prophet. Um, he legalized the domestic abuse towards wives and wives only, and he also legalized adultery under certain circumstances. He robbed caravans, and Thaddeus, I'm sure we could go on for days, a whole host of uh, other heinous things. Are those the fruits? Are those good fruits, Thaddeus? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, according to Muslim logic, uh -huh. Muhammad was the perfect example, so whatever fruit he bore must be good fruit. So therefore, uh, yes, but according to any sane person, no. no. And, uh, and, and it, you actually raised a very good point there, because if we take the Islamic narrative seriously. If we take the the biographies of Muhammad seriously, he actually was a very well-respected, upstanding citizen before he started getting these revelations. He actually was what they tried to say about him. That he, you know, he was known for his honesty and yeah. he was known for being very kind and generous. And then he had the encounter with, as you put it, the assault angel, which the chat loved, by the way. Uh, <laughs> And then he totally changed. Hmm. Little by little, he became more and more evil. It's like the Almost like the there was a spirit working hmm. on him. Hmm. Interesting, right? I mean, it, it, it honestly reminds me of, you know, the, the depictions of, like, exorcisms that are, that are performed in, like, Hollywood movies and stuff like that that are oftentimes based on true stories. It's just <laughs> the problem is... He never had that demon exercised. Um, and, uh, you know, another very common side effect of, uh, you know, demon possession is suicide, desires for suicide, which uh, in that same story of the assault angel is him stopping his revelations and then deciding that it was best that he threw himself off a cliff or down a mountain or whatever it was. Um, you know, obviously he didn't, uh, but he had the desire to do so. That's not, it's not, a, it's not a desire of someone who's just encountered the, the true loving God. You know, typically they, they like to live and they don't like to sin and try to kill themselves. But Muhammad, he's a different, he's a different, he's unique, one of a kind. So, yep. You know, I, I don't necessarily believe a lot in the biographies are mm -hmm. factual. I, I, mean, I think that they're probably loosely based on some historic events, but there's a lot of embellishment. Yeah. But of all the things in Muhammad's biography, I think he is, the story of how he became a prophet is among the most reliable. It actually explains a lot. That's how yeah. you decide if something is good history or not, is how much exploratory power it mm -hmm. has, mm -hmm. uh, you know, among other ways. Right. And it actually explains quite a lot. Right. Uh, Muhammad well, was thought he was possessed by a demon, right. and then some people convinced him that he wasn't, mm -hmm. and 
if you look at it and you say, no, maybe he actually was possessed by a demon and he just went based on the testimony of some human beings to convince himself that he was not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, And uh, and then one other thing just to add on to why I think that story is pretty authentic um, is is not only does it have good explanatory power and scope, um, it also meets the criteria of embarrassment. Right. That's a really stupid story. It's a super embarrassing story, honestly. And uh, if it, you know, if if you're a Muslim writing the story 200 years ago, making something up or 200 years later, making something up about your hero prophet, you're not going to make up that embarrassing story. Right. You're only going to include that in your list of stuff because it actually probably happened. Um, but anyhow, right. So good fruit, bad, bad fruit. Um, and what's crazy, uh, the one, one last thing I have to say about this is he somehow, despite being the, as David Wood says, the most obvious false prophet in history, despite that people still thought he's a pious man and not only just like a good dude, right. The model, the example, the best example for all people of all times to follow. No one is ever better than Muhammad, despite the fact that Sassafras could not give us a single example of how he himself was morally worse than Muhammad. Watch that video. That's a fun one. Um, But anyway, right? So a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down. And thrown into the fire. This is, if, if we had like an applause button, I think we should do that. Hey, that's where Muhammad is. Sorry. Yay. Thank <laughs> you. So yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so can you identify people by their actions. Muslims, you're embarrassed. We show you all the time embarrassing things that your best example of mankind ever did. We show you embarrassing passages from within your Quran that says that you can marry and divorce a prepubescent girl. Right. We show you that you can strike your wife. We show you that you can own slaves and then sleep with the married ones as long as they're your slave. You can commit adultery under certain 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 circumstances. Your God is the best of deceivers. Um, We can show you all of those things. And yet you still keep following that false prophet. Um, But since they've been identified by their fruits, by their actions, we can again applaud and know that Muhammad is a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? He's truly a satanically, demonically inspired person that for whatever reason you've been bamboozled into following. 